Hello, and we're back on the tube. Yes, we are. I'm afraid this time, though, there's no matching coloured shirts as we're on all different lines today as we explore various parts of the network as we do bonus secrets of the underground. And we start here at Ealing Broadway Station. This will soon be the old station building because of cross rail work to take in place right now means that there'll be a whole new station building. This will be gone in a couple of years time. But this isn't the old Ealing Broadway Station because over here is the really old Ealing Broadway Station, rather helpfully obscured by these buses, thanks 297. You can see the old building there, look up, and you can see the old station sign that says Ealing Broadway Station. Also, next time you find yourself in Ealing, why not go for a wander around the buffers right at the end of the district line platforms? Used for step-free interchange between the central line, it's also just a cool view looking back along the tracks from here. We jumped on the train ourselves and headed east a few stops and found ourselves at Chiswick Park. Which is where district line trains stop and Piccadilly lines go through the middle, which is why it's quite nice that the railings are green, predominantly for district line, and a little bit of blue for the Piccadilly. The next station is Turnbury. Actually, our next station is Hammersmith, where we were on the lookout for an old viaduct. So if you've ever seen these arches on the approach to Hammersmith Station and you've wondered, what are they? That is the Studland Road Viaduct. But what is that? That red brick construction there is the Studland Road Viaduct. You'll see that this bit of the railway is in use. That bit of the railway viaduct bridge is not in use because it used to be part of the old Grove Road Station at Hammersmith. What's that? Where's the Grove Road Station at Hammersmith? Here's a diagram. Hammersmith Grove Road was a station that opened in 1869 and a variety of trains stopped here, including Metropolitan Line services. It meant that trains coming down what is now the Circle and Hammersmith and City lines didn't have to terminate. They could instead call it Grove Road before joining the tracks using the viaduct that are now the District and Piccadilly lines. So the station was demolished years ago. There's an office block in its place now. They're building some new flats where the curve of the viaduct used to be. But if you peer over this wall, just down from the Hammersmith station, you can still see quite a large chunk of it that's left. Now I can see that you're excited by old brick viaducts. So here's a diagram showing you the next one that we're just about to see. That's right, there's another old demolished curve of track here, part of which still exists. Where the modern day Shepherd's Bush on the overground is, is where a station called Uxbridge Road used to be, and a curve of track just north of that linked up with the line just south to Latimer Road. If you want to see it at street level, it's now where a van hire company is located. Or you can get a brief glimpse of it from a train instead. And there it is. There it is. It just curves off there. Just before you get to Latimer Road Station. Next up, King's Cross. OK, St Pancras. But we came here for something that's to do with King's Cross. So this next one's a bit of a cheat, I admit it's not on the underground, it's, as you can see, we're on a Thameslink train. We've just left heading south out of King's Cross St Pancras, but it's so good I can't not tell you about this, because if I look out this window here, I'm going to see the entrance to an old tunnel that's abandoned, that's known as the York Road Curve. Up until 1976, there was an additional station at King's Cross that you can see on this map from the time called York Road. And there was an underground curve of track that connected up with the line that is now part of Thameslink. The tracks are now gone, but there's a part of the tunnel that you can still see from street level. And this is it. We're in Bravington's Walk, just around the corner from King's Cross. If you come down here and come to this fence and look down, you can see where the trains to run below. And whilst we're doing a non-tube fact at King's Cross, let's squeeze in another non-tube fact here at Canada Water. Which is somewhere where we came when we filmed Secrets of the Overground. Yes, this is an overground secret, not an underground one, but it's a good one. Bear with us. You may recall at Hammersmith, on Secrets of the Piccadilly Line, we pointed out the clock with the blobs and the ticks. It was in the shape of a tube map in blue and green. Well, come here to Canada Water on the overground, and it's also got its own orange clock. Now, I've searched on Amazon, but the phrase connect a blob clock doesn't throw up any matching results, so I can't add it to my wish list. Shame. And then we found ourselves at Kentish Town, where I found myself doing the thing that it feels like I spend my entire life doing, counting steps. 121 steps. The sign says 117. It's just occurred to me, because I know I love counting steps in these videos, that I've always gone up rather than down. Which have always gone down. Anyway, Kentish Town is four steps out. It lies. Here's a few other quick things that we think you may have missed in your travels. Come to the best corridor on the system at Embankment and see if you can find the poster which contains the mythical Bakerloo Line station, Wilston Green. At Boston Manor, we can't help but think that this isn't a coincidence. The platform poles here are painted black and yellow and nearby football club Brentford 
has the nickname of the Bees, whose colour, of course, are indeed black and yellow. At Archway on the Northern Line, have you ever noticed that the platform actually does have metallic arch decorations in it? Archway's arches. And finally, look closely on the platforms at Northfield Station and you'll see signs that say way out to Northfields Avenue. Now normally, you only ever get the name of the exit if there are multiple exits at a station, but Northfields only has one exit, right? Well, actually, it used to have another. At the eastern end of the station, there was an elevated walkway that you can still see today that took you down to Weymouth Avenue. And right at this point here is where the ticket office and entrance to the station used to be. So there you go, there's some more of our favourite things that we've spotted that you might have missed around the underground. And we're always spotting new things, so this may not be the last video. Keep watching, there may yet still be more secrets of the underground.